After the Battle of Cannae, Hasdrubal is reported to have come into Hannibal's tent and demanded that he marched on Rome straight away. When Hannibal refused, Hasdrubal is reported to have said, Surely the gods have not given the gifts to one man. You know how to win, Hannibal, but you do not know how to conquer. Was Hannibal right in his decision not to attack Rome? Well, let's find out. I have here Rome Total War, of which I have a force similar historically to Hannibal's army and an historical Roman army defending it. Now, I have not uploaded the Imperial Roman city in the game because the defences are a lot harder than they would have been at the time of the Roman War, of the Punic Wars. So, instead, I've uploaded a Greek city with stonewall defences and uh, regular towers. But let's start by going through Hannibal's men first. After the Battle of Cannae, he had approximately 54,000 men left at his disposal. Of these, his cavalry was by far his best arm. Of these, you have the Spanish heavy cavalry. And... The Gallic Cavalry. Now you'll notice in the icon that it's displaying the peasants, not cavalry. This is simply because within the game, the Celtic Cavalry are not recruitable by Rome. And after Hannibal crossed the Alps, he only had 25,000 or so men who survived the crossing. So to swell his ranks, he recruited the, the Gauls from the Po Valley. So I've had to go into the programme a little bit and alter it to make these units recruitable for the Carthaginians. But these Gallic cavalry, along with the Spanish cavalry, was the major shock arm of Hannibal's armour. These guys were designed not for skirmishing, but for smashing into units with sheer mass, good weapons, good defence, and they were simply there to break through and give the decisive blow that Hannibal needed for his victories. At Cannae, both the Celtic and the Spanish cavalry were on Hannibal's right, which he sent in to destroy the Roman equities in front of him. Now he also has the Numidians. The Numidians were the finest light cavalry of the period. Simply put, whoever had these on their side won. They were that effective. Again referring to Cannae, he placed these on his left hand flank to pin down the more numerous allied cavalry. The way they fought historically cannot be replicated in the game they didn't charge in mass one or two horsemen would go forward at a time sometimes feigning to throw javelins other times throwing a couple of javelins and they were basically trying to lure a few men out of the line but a commander of the the opposition cavalry knew that he had to keep formation to have any chance of beating the numidians and basically wore them out of missiles because he knew if he tried to charge down the Numidians being a lot more nimble on their small ponies than they were they could just simply drag them away from the battle and leave the flank open for other units to attack the rear next we have the Balearic Slingers Another thing which isn't represented in the game is that the slingers were actually better than archers. 
and these were raised as slingers as farmers in the fields they used the sling as defense a child was not allowed to eat his meal until he had hit the bowl he was going to eat his food out of with a slingshot and that's how accurate these guys were and because they could outrange archers the Carthaginians relied solely upon them for missile troops they also carried three slings of three different lengths one for long one for short and one for medium range and the other advantage these had over archers is once they had cast their missile it was almost invisible as it flew through the air a volley of arrows was visible giving the men beneath time to either raise a shield to block the missiles or find some cover or crouch down and make themselves a small target whereas with the sling they had no time to adjust because they didn't know the missiles were there until they were being hit by them this then brings us to Hannibal's infantry his finest infantry was his Spanish Scutarii now these guys were the core of Hannibal's armour he used these as his steadfast defence contrary to how they appear in the game these were equal to the standard Roman units available at the time tough dependable soldiers able to take a lot of punishment and at Cannae it was them that held the line long enough for the double envelopment they were also armed with heavy javelins like the Romans but unlike the Roman peeler they actually used those as missiles as well as hitting a unit just before contact next we have the Poini foot the Poini infantry was well disciplined and well motivated these were the fighting part of Carthage whose interest was to reopen the trade lines to enable Carthage to once again take its dominant place in the Western Med they would either be the sons or distant family members of major merchants and their vested interest was to fight to open the lines of trade Carthage wasn't fighting to destroy Rome Carthage was fighting solely to get Rome to agree to lift their embargoes and allow Carthage to trade after them we have the Celtic infantry these are the men who had fought the Romans for generation after generation and although they successfully sacked Rome once the Romans by this period had got the upper hand on them and they were starting to creep into the Po Valley and founding their own colonies and they were slowly pushing the Celts off their ancestral lands so although they knew how hard it was to fight Rome they had enough resentment for them to flock to Hannibal's standard when Hannibal called and as stated Hannibal had at his disposable disposal approximately 54,000 men now let's have a look on the other side of the field at the Romans now the Romans on their part had the Wellites the Wellites were young men 
who've been trained in military service but not yet old enough to fight in the main line. Their primary job was to protect the front of a Roman army as it deployed. Because it took time for each cohort to find its place in the battle line, the army needed to distract the, oppose, the opposition from charging into them. So the Wellity's job is to screen in front of the deploying armour and pepper the opposition army with javelins and similar to the Numidian cavalry, do little feints, charges to distract them from attacking the main Roman line as it forms. After them, we have the, we have the Hastati. Now the Hastati, traditionally, was the first main battle line. These were the citizens who were old enough to fight, but not experienced enough or wealthy enough to afford the full armour, same as the Principes and the Triarii. The job of the Hastati was to word the front line of the opposition army down. If they could win the battle and beat them, all well and good. But their primary function was to do the first bit of wording down and gaining experience. Once they had done their job, they would then allow the Principes to come through their ranks. And the Principes would then take the already tired enemy and hopefully push them into breaking. Behind the Principes was the Triarii. The Triarii was the last line and it had two purposes. The first one is if the Principes hadn't broken the opposition but they were on the verge of breaking, the Triarii could reinforce the line and rout the opposing army. Or, if it looked like they was going to lose the battle, the Hastati, the Wellites and the Principes could retire in order through the Triarii and do an orderly retreat back to their defended camp. Traditionally, the Triarii knelt at the back of the Roman battle line with the spears held at a 45 degree angle so as to form a crude phalanx, all they had to do was stand up. Now, the Hastati and the Principes were armed with two peeler, which were heavy javelins, a gladius, which is a short sword, and a pugio, which was a dagger. And that's the weapons they took. The Hastati, as they were young, normally they only had a small rectangle covering the chest called a pectoral for defense and a large scutum shield. The Principes, being older, could usually afford their own chainmail and helmet and leg greaves. Whereas the Triarii, being the veterans of the army, could afford the best armour of the day. And the units left for the Romans to describe in this is the Equites. And the Equites was the standard cavalry arm of a Roman legion at this period. Poorly equipped, their main role was mainly to screen and chase down any skirmishes and protect the army upon marching. They was not of high quality and they was expected more to just hold the opposition cavalry off long enough for the, for the legionaries to beat the opposing armour and then if they managed to beat the opposing armour the equities would rush in behind the retreating armour inflicting casualties to make sure that if they were retreating it turned into a rout. Now, Rome also relied on allies to do the fighting with them and besides every legion 
was an appropriate number of allies. And the allies get their name from the Roman for flank, which is allies. Because that's where the allies were placed, was on the flank of the Romans. So their main role was to stiffen the flanks to allow the Roman citizens to win the battle in the centre. It's not been recorded how the Allies were actually armed or deployed on battle. It's not known if they deployed in one line like the Greek hoplites or whether they formed the three ranks similar to the Romans. They also provided more cavalry than the Romans, particularly the city of Capua, which was in good horse training country. And usually the Allies would provide two cavalry for every one Roman. And again, these were grouped on one, one body on one flank of the Roman armour. And as the equities, their job was mainly just to hold the opposition cavalry at bay and then pursue the opposition once it had broken. Now, Hannibal understood the value of the allies to the Romans and he tried everything he could to detach them. After he captured them, he released them sent them back to the cities they come from saying i've come to free you from rome not to kill you our fight is with rome alone it is not with you and it is failure to do this is one of the reasons why principally hannibal lost the second punic war it's something that pyrrhus when he invaded tried and failed and it's something that centuries later Spartacus tried and failed. Even though approximately a third of the Roman population was slaves and it was a slave revolt, he was still unable to detach the Roman allies. And as such, without them allies, he just had no chance of winning. Now, before I set the game going... I want to return back to the Carthaginian armour, of which you will hopefully notice three things. First of all, no sacred band cavalry and no sacred band infantry. By this period, them units just didn't exist. There was a small number of Carthaginian cavalry whose number was so small that in any major engagement they don't even get mentioned the other thing is no elephants Hannibal at the time of Cannae had one elephant left called Cyrus the other 36 had either died through the cold or killed in the battle of Trebia Hannibal's second victory of Trasimena was also fought without elephants. And he didn't use elephants again until he landed in North Africa to face Scipio at the Battle of Zama. So, here's where I'll end video one. And on video two... I will pick it up with the problems of attacking a sitter. So if you like it what you've hear if you like what you've heard up to now, press that like button, press to ring the little reminder bell, and that will let you know as soon as the second video is uploaded. But for now, I hope that gives you a good indication of the, the armies facing each other and the challenge of Hannibal first with his 54,000 men albeit well trained and well disciplined and well experienced 
facing an army of over 777,000 men. Now you may think, how does he make up 777,000 men? So before I do finish, I'll give you a quick rundown of the manpower available to Rome. Under the active service of the two consuls, which is 54,000 men, horse and foot, there was the Sabines and Tyrrhenians, who could provide another 54,000. You had the tribes of the Apennines, which were the Samnites, another Oscan foot. They could raise 40,000 men. Then there were the reserves in and near Rome, which is 53,500, which brings it to 201,500 men. In addition to this, according to the list handed in by the Allies, the Latins, the Samnites, the Mesapians, Lucanians, Marsians, and all other cities, there could be furnished in times of need 294,000 men. There were two legions in Sicily of 8,800 men, and general drafts in Roman Campania could raise another 273,000 men. That brings a total of 777,300 men. And that information I've gained from Volume 1 of Hannibal by Theodore Ayrault Dodge, who was an American Civil War general who walked the March of Hannibal from leaving New Carthage, or Cartagena as it's called today, all the way through Italy, to Cannae, to Rome, and all the way through to Zama. It's an excellent read because he writes with the eye of a military man. He doesn't write with the eye of a historian. So he sees the lie of the land as an officer sees the lay of the land and as he's trained to see how, how to make use of the land by a military mind. So I recommend, it's two volumes, as I say, it's called Hannibal and it's by Theodore Ayrault Dodge. So, as I say, I'll start the second video with the actual siege of Rome, but for now, enjoy the rest of your day and see you later.